Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the Dota 2 Champions League. Season number 11, round of 8 coverage here. Best of three action going to be coming at you today. We got two more best of threes. Our last two best of threes here in the round of eight before we advance on to a semifinal matches. Again, this is a single elimination event as a quick reminder. So you lose here, you are done, you win, you stay alive for what is that $5,000 prize pool there. Looking forward to having a lot of fun here today. Once again, I am Breaky CPK, joined by my co-caster Z-Rock here. And we got our first matchup, Team Spirit versus EWF, Earth World Flame. In this best of three. And we already got a Monkey King to kick it off. We got a Lena thrown in here. We got plenty of action already in the draft. Xerox, though, how's it going? I'm doing fantastic. It's a great morning. Awesome. We got Monkey King, man. We have a Monkey King. Just woke me right up. And we have some weird bands. Slaughter not banned. Coddle not banned. That's like, true. You know, it's... This is yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting with with that that idea. Like, I'm not saying that's necessarily happening here, but isn't there the argument almost that you could ban these kind of mid tier heroes, leaving these top tier heroes open? Is obviously you're going to be giving one up, but then that get like they kind of did that, right? They they left a centaur open that's picked up, but they got a monkey king, which has been highly considered to be top tier bans recently. So, yes and no. We we've, we've done ten games total in the last two days on this turn well last two times we cast to this and centaur was never banned in first phase in any of those 10 games so he was kind of always an option if they wanted him monkey king was banned every single game yeah so i mean it's it's one of those things yeah you could have maybe but ewf didn't take the slaughter they took the centaur like the slaughter would have been the one that would have been the most like sent or slaughter coddle would have probably been like the the opening you get to trade off monkey king but instead, yeah, I'm curious about the Venge ban. That, that's very odd to me in the first phase. We've seen Carry Venge tried a few times. Yes, it has a point. It has games I've seen it win, but it's it's looked like it's struggled in this tournament and in this patch. Um, so I'm, I'm really surprised to see that get banned first phase, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to watch this Monkey King, man. Yeah, already, uh, you know, as you said, it kind of, you know, these are early, early matches for us, but uh, it's a, definitely looking forward to some good Dota 2. Actually, we've had a lot of fun games. We had both series go three games yesterday, so. But, uh, yeah, when you, when you kick it off with the Monkey King, it definitely perks up a little bit. It's like, oh, here we go. Uh, obviously, the, the newest hero to enter Captain's mode. I've gotten the chance to see it several times. Uh, at least in, in Chinese Dota that I've been casting. There was actually one other event. Uh, some CIS team picked it up from what remaining. I remember. But um, point is, the hero definitely has potential Five to be powerful. Remaining. And and I, you know, initially I was kind of I was unsure where we would see it. I thought maybe like as an off lane, He's but no. This four roaming support is where he stands out, right? You know, he gets that information mm -hmm. for your team. He sets up ganks in all the lanes because he's just so mobile compared to any other hero. We talked about the idea of like creating a hero with like a tunneling system that goes from one side of the map. Obviously, that's ridiculous, but. Monkey King is kind of the closest thing that can get to one place on the map to the next as soon as possible. Like, he's probably the fastest right, out of any hero in the game that can get from one area to the next. Uh, I mean, Storm Spirits, obviously. The well, fastest. okay, yeah. That's um, team pick. But outside of Storm yeah, Spirit, maybe. He's probably about he's up there. Yeah, he's probably a little faster than Co op. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely very, very quick around the map. And he can move around fairly undetected unless their wards are good. Uh, now, what I'm what I'm really curious to see, because I do know this remaining. works in high tier gameplay. I've seen it done in scrims. Is running in Five like if they go with that that opening that we saw yesterday ever the like Rubik Earth Spirit opening, uh, and the other team picks a Monkey King, they can aggro dual lane the Monkey King and can make him an off laner, and then just give him a stunner with him, like any stun in the game. Like Ogre's great for it, and then you just run at their dual lane because or their their trial lane because it doesn't do any damage for the first like three levels. Mm -hmm. And Monkey King will just decimate that lane. So I think it'll be ran as a four roll. Yeah, that's what we've seen in the past, and it's worked very well. But I would love to see it get ran as like a really aggressive off lane with yeah. one other one other hero with him to back him up. Because Ursa Disruptor is a strong enough dual lane on its own. You figure it's gonna be tried eventually. Again, this hero like just came out here, and in general, like as far as his lifespan before 
when he came out to then when he's introduced in a captain's mode, I, he's probably one of the shorter ones too. Again, I'm not too familiar with the overall Ladies history, but I feel like it happened pretty quickly. It was what really like two months this hero was out, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. he's in a captain's mode. So it's not like he was even out that long before he he came into the game officially. I guess maybe more like three months, but still. Point stands that, yeah, overall, again, the hero itself is still very new, let alone into competitive play, so... Um, yeah, because he got out announced at TI last year. He came out in the first big patch... 7.0, After yeah. TI, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's only been a few months, and I like that style a little better. You release him, you maybe go slightly heavy-handed on your on his nerfs. Like, they, they did nerf him a lot since oh, the yeah. beginning. Uh, his E used to be 100% lifesteal, 200 bonus damage. So he's been nerfed quite a bit. Uh, and then you just throw him into CM and see where he lies. And so far, again, overall, from, from my experience, maybe like four games total, it seems like he's actually been pretty, pretty, pretty powerful in understandably ways. Kind of considered top tier. Anyways, we'll see what he does so, here for Team Spirit. Anyway, the Tinker Pick. Yeah. Uh, the Tinker Pick is interesting. I'm curious to see what they do with it because there's there's two sides to picking the Tinker here. One is your Tinker can go the standard farming build where you max march early on and you just try to keep all the lanes shoved out so that means your Monkey King and your Ursa have the freedom to roam and take Roche and uh, have a bunch of this room around the map because their lanes are always pushed up. Or he goes Rocket Laser, gets an early bots and just like TPs in and kills stuff with the Monkey King and Ursa, like all over the map. So I'm curious to see what the what the purpose of picking the Tinker is, because Monkey King and Ursa are not the best scaling heroes in the game for uh especially for like a support monkey king. Like Ursa does eventually flatten out a little bit. Uh, whereas like a weaver could scale very late. Like we've seen the power of a super like a weaver you can split super hard. Uh, super difficult to kill and still just pumps out damage on the back lines. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, and they got catch. They definitely have some catch potential for that tinker. Got to be a little Five bit careful. Center with the, the, last, lead. the last band slider. That's kind of funny. Yeah, seeing that eventually coming out there. Dada I guess they, they technically will. I don't know. They already have their four position. Among, I guess they, like you said, though, it could have been an offlane Monkey King or could have been an offlane Slaughter for that matter. So they just don't want to give it up. So it could have been ran. Neither one of those, and Slaughter's just a hero. You, you, you can make work if you get the option to pick it up. So. Um, yeah. Rubik final pick as a support. So, wait, what? So, it is going to be a Coralina. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a mid Lena. Yep. That's always fun. So, uh, and I think we saw some teams experiment with the support Lena yesterday, and overall it was a failed disaster. It just <laughs> it didn't work. The stun range is too short. Especially it was paired with an Ogre yesterday, too, and it, it just really did fall flat. So... I'm I'm happy to see the admin Lena. Yeah, and that's kind of funny. That that just hit me that we saw Pro Toto run it yesterday as that support Lena in the hands of Asenia, but we saw before that Mickey in the previous series run it as a core Lena in that middle lane and and, and wreck with it. So so far our our examples seem like the core Lena is definitely more potent and more viable of an option. So. It's going to be fun to see here from EWF matching up against the Tinker. The final pick, though, for Spirit, again, you, you, would, you would believe it's going to be an offlane. It needs to be something with a stun, and that's kind of the problem. The offlane pool doesn't have a lot of those left. Batrider wouldn't be a terrible option here. Gives you a nice grab on Weaver until the Lincolns, and you can always go with Force Staff to make that work afterwards. Um, I know it's fallen from Grace a little bit, but I think that's what I like best here if you want an offlaner. What about a Tide Couldn't still go Darks here. That, that hero's gone. It's, uh... I know, and it sucks. Okay. Earthshaker. All right. We might get my dream here. That's That might be the offlane Monkey King. No, it's going to be an offlane. Yeah. I, not not to shatter your dreams, but it's an offlane Earthshaker. And he's good for that. Block the creep wave initially and can use that fissure for lane control ideas. But a roaming Earthshaker yeah. is pretty good, too. Like I'm, I'm, I see what you're saying there. I mean... It, it enables their lanes a little more. If you go an offlane Earthshaker or an offlane Monkey King and a uh, roaming Earthshaker, then you have kill pressure across all three lanes. All it takes is an Earthshaker roam to the Monkey King's lane and they get a kill with the power of the E on the passive on Monkey King. You roam them down to the Ursa's lane and you hit the block and somebody dies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what they do decide to go with it. I don't think either way is bad. I think they both have Five potential. Seconds remaining. Oh, got the strategy time here. Figure out where they want to land everyone. Get those early items in. 
here we go again the patch 7.04 we were casting our series our final series yesterday and it literally came out after the first game I had to restart the client <laughs> lo and behold we had uh, we had patch changes of balance and whatnot so something else to keep in mind and take into consideration right here bigger one some of the item changes of course so uh, things like the Hurricane Pike, Silver Edge, but uh, I think the Side Shop has kind of been the most d hot topic discussed one with the Slippers of Agility mm -hmm. getting removed. So, kind of impact. And, and yeah, it's kind of been interesting to see the, the debate on that and how that's kind of already taken effect where I guess the overall consensus is that it's almost buffed off lanes but hurt the core hero with the Side Shop presence. Yeah, but I mean, to be honest, even some off laners bought that PMS. And yeah, overall, it's probably a little more impact, of course. But... Well, I, I guess the idea, though, was that you could just buy a straight up PMS now on an off lane and not have to worry about, you know, even using the you... side shop for that. Yeah, you, you could. And that's mostly because of the fact that we have shrines now. Yeah. And as a core, you can't necessarily do that as effectively. So, yeah. It's kind of the argument. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. Well, the dream is indeed that it is off lane or shaker. <laughs> I mean, we get to see a Monkey King. Like, that, that that's cool in itself. We at least get to see it. Like, oh, yeah. I think you're sure. reaching for too much there, Z-Rock. Come on. Let's just be oh, happy we get FNG It even fit King. what I said. It was a stunning support. They could yeah. lane with him. But, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, the Earthshaker ended up buying a Quelling Blade right away. So, oh, does this still work? Is he going to pull okay. here? So, you used to be able to do some weird stuff with the Creep Hagger where if you drug a Creep out, and then fissured the wave. You you drug out the jungle camp about halfway, and then you fissured the wave. And if you angled the fissure, the creeps would just be like, "Oh yeah, I guess I can run this way." And then they'd run into the camp. Um, I believe that doesn't work anymore because the creeps stop when they get fissured instead of like trying to find an alternate path. But huh. we'll have to see. I, well, I'm not sure why he went a quelling blade. We're not gonna see it because they realize that they're running aggressive trial lane, so he's actually gonna go top instead. So they have that ward spotting them out coming up here, so. Yeah, they're going to send Ursa bottom now. With the Disruptor. I would have liked to see that idea. It's clearly he was setting up for something. It was but, just strange. I, I don't believe that works in any way. I don't think it's worked for like a year and a half. <laughs> it's just been that long since he's played Earthshaker, perhaps. I would hope not. <laughs> oh, Phobos has played it in the yeah, past. I'm sure he has. Yeah, that's interesting. Monkey yeah, King. Monkey King looking for some really early aggression here on Lena. Seems like a prime target. She's obviously not the doesn't have the most utility as far as getting away here, so probably wait to level two at least on Tinker, get those rockets, the heat seeking missiles. <laughs> oh, he's gonna get the courier. Oh, is that what he's going for all along? Yes he is. Nice. Oh no, F and G! <laughs> oh, that's not worth it, maybe? I don't know. I mean you got the courier, but Give it a first Team play. gold wise, yes it is. Uh, is it worth it in the course of the actual game? Maybe not, because the Lena got a lot out of that. Like XP wise, the Lena got way more. But yeah, if you look at the net worth, it's it's. I mean, you're break even, but you're actually like ahead. The courier was worth more, gold wise. Yeah, that's that's true for the team gold, as you said. But Nix here on the Lena, he's uh. He's feeling good about that, and look at look at FNG. He's just back here. He's like, all right, that happened. Bravo Spring now. There we go. Leaps on a Nyx oh, right didn't there. Check. Didn't really connect Iceberg. Yeah. As the rocket nice. though with the laser, and that that's a more than enough damage. So. Orb of Venom and ranged melee heroes. Good mechanics, Valve. Seems odd, doesn't it? Good it's old. their first attempt at trying something like this, where we have a hero that's classified as a melee hero, but he has range. And so you see stuff like Basher and Orb of Venom just have these weird effects. Dragon Lance doesn't work on him, right? Because he's classified Correct. melee. Correct, he's melee. He's oh, actually, Echo Saber does. Rubik going to be jumped on right here. Going for the turn on Iceberg. LSA will land a couple of auto attacks, but there we go with the Boundless Strike and more than enough save there to keep Iceberg alive. And now the turn kill on a Nyx. He lands another LSA to save himself at least. But well played by Monkey King to save his teammate there. Yeah, it's... FNG is very, very nice. If he didn't take the Boundless Strike there and took passive, uh, he gets both of those skills, but Iceberg definitely dies. Wait. He did not... I think he was going to use a Shrine right there, 
and he accidentally aggroed the Ancient somehow. Because, like, with this reaction, and yeah, he definitely oh, no. didn't use his gold either. Uh-oh. Uh, That's unfortunate. And it also increases your respawn time if you die to neutrals. Yep. Be changed they used to have everyone suiciding to them. Yeah, they uh, changed that to 7.0, I believe it was. So, that's unfortunate, but and so the star now just got, and now he has to walk back. I guess he doesn't, he chooses not to TP. He has a TP, but I guess he figured he's not missing out on much experience. So, yeah, not the not the greatest start of the stuff for Nyx. He got the first blood at least, but since then it's been downhill for him. The Monkey King is rotated to the bottom lane now. Trying to ping out Shadow, eh? On the Ogre Magi roaming about. Port's coming in, though. They're definitely going to be, be looking to make a play on the Centaur. And there we go. Hirsch, uh, shot not going to be used right there. Yogurt, though, nice hoof stomp on both. Balance Strike connects, though. Kinetic Fill will trap in place. And the final auto attack from BZZ to execute him right there. So, Yeah, and honestly, this is a great lineup for Spirit to run this Monkey King with. They pick something that has enough CC to pair with it. Ooh, nice, found a D word too. Right at the end of that century. Only 20 seconds left and they get a fresh horde. So, very, very nice from Spirit. But yeah, they have plenty of CC to like couple with that Primal Spring to get some early game aggression. And once Monkey King hits three, this is when it gets terrifying. Like, this is his weak point right now. Not good news for EWF here on the Radiant side. And we got top lane, meanwhile, Earthshaker. He's 14-0. I guess he's not doing that great. Or so is the one obviously doing great as the matchup. Definitely better for him. But Weaver is doing fantastic up here. 29-7 for the side of the EWF. But middle lane again. Lena will yeah. fall. Monkey King rotating back in. And as you mentioned, it's just that presence. Yeah, there's so almost much. perfect parity between every lane except mid. Mid is the one being to like totally screwed over right now. But Phobos top, maybe... Caught the t uh, go the bottom lane. They do take out Yogurt. Now DK Phobos, he's trying to juke and jive. Monkey King coming in for the turn kill. So he takes out Earthshaker, but it comes at a cost. FNG. I mean, that's that mobility once again, though. Especially early on in the game, man. In fact, he's able to get up there from the middle lane without a TP that quickly. And yeah, and him being this involved in getting these assists so early, uh, it's going to result in some very quick phase boots for FNG. And with the Sorb of Venom, it's going to be terrifying. Any lane that this Monkey King goes to is going to be super impacted. Oh, wow, that was Ogre Magi over here. I guess this glimpse was used. Looks like it. Trap him up there. So another kill. 7-2 to start here in favor now of Team Spirit. And top lane, FNG looking to continue to be involved. Urshaker level 4. No Echo Slime or anything like that just yet. But they see Slide over here on the Rubik. They would love to go for him as the easier target perhaps. But Yeah, and they probably could. The, the fear is that if Weaver goes off in that, he could double kill both of them. So FNG's trying to make sure that when they go on the Rubik, it's in a position where uh, the Weaver's not just going to have some huge impact. He's going to jump in for chasing. There's that Fissure. Boundless Strike eventually going to come too. So <laughs> those long stuns that Rubik has to deal with right here. And DK Phobos lands the Enchant Totem with that Aftershock, and they secure the kill right there. I believe Aftershock even got a buff, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I saw that recently in 7.03 even. I think it was. But anyway, so... Using that right there to the effectiveness of getting the kill. And they're going to run away. Weaver's trying to set up them for that turn, but it's not going to happen. The bug's killed. And they'll walk away right there. So you saw Ogre and Lena even roaming over. Lena, level four still. She's really kind of being desperate right here, trying to reach for something. And comes up short. She's being completely outleveled by this team. Oh, now. yeah. This, this roaming has just crushed her. And honestly, Iceberg could have pushed the lead even more by going the full laser rocket max, but does want to kind of hedge his bets and not go too far of a deviation from the standard Tinker build just so he can keep farming, get those early bots up, and uh, push out the lanes. So she will hit level 5 right there, but yet Iceberg, he's, he's almost level 7, so he's keeping really a level and a half advantage at this point over the Lena, so pending any hero kills. And actually, middle lane, we could be seeing some hero kills coming out. This here comes the Roma smoke attempt. The lift is successful right there. The LSA will connect. I thought it was going to be late. And Iceberg eventually going to fall. March coming out, though. Going to try to set up some turn kills. Nyx is caught in it. Being on that Lena, that is. Thunderstrike applied. Here comes Monkey King. Nice fire blast dump with the balance strike. More than enough range to secure that kill. We're not even done just yet. We could be seeing more. Chasing after the Rubik now. Throws out that zap. He will fall as well. Double kill coming out for FNG. 
and that's going to be the end of it. So they got Tinker at least, but it does result in the two counter kills, including on that Lena yet again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this poor Lena. She's not even level six. More eight minutes in the game as a mid laner. Oh no. She's dead again. She did again. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay, see, now I'm starting to feel bad for her. <laughs> I guess it could have felt bad earlier even, but uh, she may be. The balance strike wasn't the best connecting, but oh, there's a, there's a Fissure. <laughs> yeah, more long range. Actually, turn kill attempt on a Tinker right here. My King still wants to go. Another Primal Spring on in. The Glimpse back on to Lena, actually, and that will be the end for the LSA. Kind of, oh my god, she's surviving forever. Killed by the Newts. This time you want to be killed by the Newts. It actually is successful, so we'll play it right there. But we got some mid wars action, baby, as the Echo Slam to take out Rubik in the background. Now the chase on a tank here, but he's going to pop that shrine all of a sudden. Yogurt finding himself in a very awkward position. Double kill for DK Phobos. Oh, man, they really just try to help right there. We're not even done just yet. Neuropunk41 wants a kill out of this. He's going to throw himself to the Wolves, though. And this is going to be a complete cleanup. Time lapse. Okay, kill Disruptor, actually. So maybe not as certain as I thought. That time lapse used at the last second, but FNG, it's hard to get away from him. Uh, Shikuchi's good for that, though. He doesn't have a TP, however, and I think they probably noticed this. Primal Spring, not going to land. Will they see him, though? Yeah, they're doing a good job of kind of controlling all the positions right here. FNG almost dying. He will die in return. He gives up another kill. And Weaver, someone not only still alive, but getting kills, but finally the Enchant Tota to finish the job. The build from Phobos actually secured that kill. Normally, we see two or three points in Fisher, uh, and then they max Aftershock. But he went 1-1-4, one, one, making the Aftershock damage just enough to kill Weaver. That was so well played out of Weaver there. This is ours. That with that finish, I mean Weaver is he's, he's top of the net worth charts now <laughs> because of how that all played out. So I mean that's mm -hmm. that's the feel good at least for EWF, but overall obviously Team Spirit is looking pretty comfortable with this game. And bottom lane, there could be more action even. This is going to be just one of those games, isn't it? Where the action just doesn't stop. Nice primal spring initiation. Here comes Tinker with the march. Execution as Ogre will fall on the laser now finish the job on Centaur and just like that another two kills for Team Spirit. FNG, what is he? He's four, two, and nine right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they yeah, also Weaver. He's been in all but three kills in this team. Money to burn. Was that a turn kill? No, he survived. Wait, where's Earth Shaker? Oh, there he is. For some reason I couldn't see him. Yeah, they're killing Rubik. Or eh, trying to. Trying to. Vankster wants to give it to Phobos, but was really struggling to do that. <laughs> there we go. Fisher will secure that. Well, we're going to even see more kills, but Z-Rock, I'm going to give you a chance to analyze what's going on here. I mean, I mean this game is bloody. I, he, he just, I don't know if they thought they had an answer to the Monkey King. Lena mid, it's in theory an okay answer. Light Psycho Ray knocks out a ton of trees. Laguna Blade can just delete him. But in reality, it's it's not paying off how they want. And this is honestly the, the biggest problem. No matter how many answers you have to the Monkey King, if he notices he gets caught in the trees, he can start the Primal Spring channel and jump out. If he pops that almost instantly, the animation goes off, and then he, he gets the jump before he actually gets stunned out of the tree. Yeah. Radiance Ooh, bottom tower close. Is under attack. Missed. I will say the one thing with the difference between Boundless Strike and Earthshaker Fisher. There's a different feel to the way the skills connect. Like, I know when I hit a Fisher, I'm not 100% sure if I hit a Boundless Strike or not when I use that skill. It doesn't have that same connection feeling that a Fisher does uh, with the way that the animation comes off your hand and, and everything in the game. The animations are a little odd. It but feels, yeah, this yeah. is... Go ahead. Well, it feels more flimsy, yeah. Balance strike. Oh, oh my god, he just walks right up, pops the Echo Slam, and with that level 4 Aftershock, so much damage. Down goes Weaver. The chase will continue on a slight right here. They'll finish him off. Nicey Tinker looking to do some damage to Ogre Magic. Maybe kill him before he can TP. Well, the stun will help with that. And that's a three for nothing. Obviously, great assistance coming in right here. They don't even need Ursa, who, oh, by the way, is getting his own Aegis as he's soloing yeah. the Roshan in the meantime. Total control over this game. And uh, one thing I, I find interesting, so Clockwork and Earthshaker both have very strong similarities in the fact that the meta seen them all go back to going Tranquil Boots. And everyone thought it was because, okay, hey, they have a mana talent at 10. Clock gets 200 mana, Earthshaker gets 250. So they can kind of skip the Arcane Boots then. But now no one's taking the 250 mana talent. It's it's just kind of odd to me. Um, opting for 10 strength instead of the mana. But Shaker has Blink I, at 12 minutes. Yeah. 
part of me kind of thinks that that's because of how successful he's doing. Like, if they were kind of struggling, he was more of a typical offlane. Earthshaker, that's not necessarily going to great farm as all. They're going to find a couple more kills here, by the way. Static Storm coming out with that kinetic field. They're both, they're just locked into their death. And there's no chance of surviving to that one. So, But, yeah, DK Phobos, if anything, he's probably feeling comfortable about Enhancing that damage of his enchant totem, you know, want to get some big auto attacks in. And, and again, this lead is just ridiculous now. It's a team spirit. They would have to throw quite a bit to lose this game. Yeah, monkey just got a ward in their base at 13. <laughs> that seems a little unnecessary, but it actually gives you great ideas as to what the team's doing because they're not uh, using a lot of ports on EWF to move people around. They're running to different lanes. So if you get an idea of what lane a hero is going in at the very beginning of their movement, it gives you a lot of info. Monkey, though, in a little bit of trouble. Well, he actually whiffed his balance strike right there, and now he's just going to run. So that's that mobility top lane. Centaur, he's going to fall. Doesn't have Stampede, so. Yep. No chance he's getting away. Calling it. And they, uh, they're done. <laughs> they're like, you know what? We're done with this. Well, it was an experiment to leave the Monkey King in. I cannot imagine it happens next game. That was a 14-minute GG. It's not like they, it's that not is... like it's not like anything really happened to cause that GG. It's just.